Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another round of sound. This is the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. I'm Bob Pompiani. So much to talk about. We'll delve into last night's big fight in Vegas, McGregor Mayweather. Also, could this be Clint Hurdle's final month as manager of the Pittsburgh Pirates? But the number one topic tonight on the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown will be the Steelers roster positions as they get closer to the start of the regular season. Here is your panel left to right on your television screen. We have Colin Dunlap, host of the Fan Morning Show, 93.7 The Fan. In the middle, look at that magenta purple, however you want to describe it. Plus the 412 in the middle. That's Chris Muller from Starkey and Muller. Very Barney-ish, Malsey. Very Barney-ish. <laughs> and then <laughs> Chris Mag. Pre and post game host of all Pirate Baseball on 93.7, The Fan. So, gentlemen, welcome. Let's get right into this. We're going to start with the Steelers. They got a lot of interesting battles going on. Colin Dunlap, I'll start with you. And I want to start with wide receivers because that's one of those areas they got a surplus. Who stays, who goals when it's all said and done? Well, you know, they're going to keep six guys, that's for sure. I would look at Cleveland right now and try to trade a guy like Kobe Hamilton if I could. The guy, you know what? Justin Hunter was brought here to make a football team. He's going to make a football team. That's a guy that excites me. That's a guy I like down around the red zone. But those Kobe Hamilton, Eli Rogers, Eli Rogers will probably make the football team. But a guy like Kobe Hamilton is a guy who's going to be gone. And a guy like DHB is fighting for his life. Even though he plays special teams, I don't know if he's going to make this team, Bob. I think if DHB, I think the story with him is you hear coaches talk about how important special teams is all the time. It's one of three phases of the game, this, that, and the other thing. And I think with DHB, you're going to see whether that's more coach speak than it is reality or whether it really is something that, that Mike Tomlin, in this case, believes in. Because if they think somebody else in that core of receivers can be – close to DHB on special teams, I think he's gone. If they actually think he provides something that other people can't, then he probably stays. Yeah, and if we're going to go with six receivers, I think it might be easier to try and sneak someone other than an established veteran whose name is recognizable, like Darius Hayward Bay, through onto a practice squad, for instance. If you want to keep somebody young there or somebody who's a depth piece, then yeah, I think we're all probably in agreement that Hayward Bay, because of the special teams work, has a better shot to make this team. I'll tell you this, Boo Boo Schuster Smith or whatever, uh, Smith Schuster, <laughs> would do, Boo -boo. do himself a lot of favors if he could stay healthy. Um, because this is a guy who has a spot. He's going to be on this football team. But if he can't contribute, and some of the injuries aren't his, when you get your leg bent backwards, it's really not your fault. But he needs to stay healthy to show people what he can do and why the Steelers drafted him where they drafted him. Well, it's not him. really his fault, but it's just one of those unfortunate circumstances. You get another second-round pick that can't get anywhere near a football field, and it's Senquez Golson in the defensive backfield. I'm pretty excited, in principle, about what Juju Smith-Schuster can provide for them. But, yeah, it, it automatically, because of some of the injury woes they've had with some of these higher draft picks recently, Gol Golson, excuse me, being number one among them, you automatically start to wonder if this guy's going to get that label attached to him throughout his career. Chris Mack, I want to ask you about this next one since you guys brought up Senquiz Golson. The Steelers have invested a lot in their secondary, which to me is still somewhat of a mess. When you look at it, five picks starting with Golson, two number twos, a number one, a three, a five, and they brought in Cody Sensiball just because they aren't sure. How much of a mess is this, and how costly could it be, Chris Mack? Well, I, I don't know if it's if I'd call it a mess yet. I mean, we're watching preseason work at this point, which maybe gives you reason to believe that it is more of a mess uh, once we get to the regular season. I'm more worried about depth issues once injuries come along. Guys are going to get hurt. It's going to happen. We're, we're talking about Senquez Golson. The guy hasn't even played a regular season snap because he's been injured every year in the middle of the summer. The first big injury on this defense, forget just the secondary, anywhere on this defense could bring it, bring it to its knees because they don't have the depth, especially in the secondary, to withstand those kind of injuries if they're going to last three, I, four weeks without a guy like Artie Burns, for example. I like William Gay like five years ago, and I, I like William Gay as a locker room leader and all that kind of stuff. It's an indictment of the secondary that William Gay is still defaulted to have a spot on this football team. That's not a knock on William Gay, but he's had a great career it should be over here in Pittsburgh if they could go ahead and get anybody to take his job. And that should have happened by this point. I, I don't want to judge it either way, Colin, but is, it, is that on, more on the coaching staff for not being willing to go to someone younger? Is that more on the younger guys for not showing that they're ready to carry? Well, yet? you know what? They did draft Artie Burns in the first round, and I think he's going to be ready to play. Absolutely. It's, it's finding that other side. It's finding another corner. It it's, Ross, Ross Cockrell. Cockrell just isn't good enough. You know what needs to be good enough? You know what's the determining factor that tells you if that secondary is good or not is the pass rush, really. I, I mean, if T.J. Watt and Bud Dupree are consistently getting to quarterbacks, consistently 
consistently blowing up pockets and forcing plays to be other than what the offense wants them to be, suddenly Ross Cockrell's not going to look horrible. But if people are standing back there with time to throw, if the better quarterbacks in the league that they play this year are standing there, planting their feet, and then driving into throws, guess what? Ross Cockrell's going to get picked on. Ross Cockrell's going to look bad. And the Steelers are going to be frustrated again. Just like he did last year with Tom Brady. And you got him on the schedule as well, Aaron Rodgers and others. Um, Stafford, two guys who can pick you apart if given time. I think that's a key. All right, we've got a minute left on this one. Colin Dunlap, we'll start with you about running backs. Any surprises here? Do you suspect... You know, Le'Veon Bell's going to be out there all the time. Right, and James Conner's going to be roster? his backup, and the third guy is going to be scratched. He'll be – he'll it, well, You don't think Rose, Lyle Davis will be on the roster? No, he'll make the roster, but sometimes he'll get a hat, sometimes he won't, because Rosie Nix, it depends on what they employ in terms – what they want to employ in terms of a fullback game, I think. But James Conner's on this team, and I think now Davis will be the third back that you asked. That's answering the question in a long-winded way, Bob. I think Niall Davis deserves to be the third back, and I think it's, it'll be funny. You'll see Rosie Nix get a hat in one of those games where Mike Tomlin decides, probably against the Ravens, like on the road, he'll decide well, this is supposed to be a physical, knockdown, drag out, blood sport type of football game. So I'll throw Rosie Nix in there and run the ball 62 times. Well, look, Rosie Nix can punch guys in the mouth, and that's the most fun part of his game. But he can do things as well with the football if you can get it to him. So I'd much rather have him in there than wasting Niall Davis in the lineup so that he can return six kickoffs that he won't get to catch anyway because they'll go over his head for touchbacks. What's the point? That is an interesting point. When we come back, we're going to talk about the Pirates. Could this be the last month for Clint Hurdle? Also, Francisco Cervelli's hurt again. $22 million still owed to this guy. Is the window closed? We'll get into that and more when we continue right here on the number one Cochran Sports Showdown. Don't go away. The number one Cochran Sports Showdown is brought to you by number one Cochran. Go one better. And by Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield. Have a greater hand in your health. 